a mother, a stay-at-home mother is the hardest job in my daughter's life. You're headed for depression. You got to do something. I stayed for nearly 10 years. I, I heard everything, but I didn't go back to work until I was ready to go back to work. My husband, my husband was ready for me to go back to work. I said, Mom, you shouldn't worry who comes into your house and it's a mess because it will get messy. The brightness of this day has given me the opportunity to bring you this video. Welcome back to my channel, Winging It with AC. My name is AC, and I have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful special guest on the channel today. I'm going to leave her to introduce herself, and then we will get talking. Sweet Ajele. Sweet Ajele. If you do not know Sweet Ajele, then you're not on YouTube. But anyway, we'll get into that a bit more. But I have Sweet Ajele here, and we're going to have a conversation about her motherhood journey. So you know, Winging It With AC is primarily about sharing motherhood experiences with um, first time moms and generally giving support to all moms out there. I don't have questions planned, so I am basically winging it. So I'm just going to ask you questions as we go along and then we'll see where the spirit leads us. So, Sweet Ajene, once again, you're welcome to my channel. Thank you. I'm winging it with this today. Yeah. <laughs> VIP. Thank you. Okay, so Sweet Ajene, please tell us how many kids you have. I have four. Three naturally and one a gift from marriage. All right. So, Sweet Ajene, please tell us about your pregnancy. So, how, what was your experience like with your three pregnancies? So, I would say I had easy pregnancy. Okay. So, yeah. I ate a lot, a lot of spicy stuff, but like, I, I'm blessed. I, I enjoyed my pregnancy. Whenever I'm pregnant, I should feel better. I, yes, my skin glows, everything about me just becomes beautiful. So, I actually get people telling me you should be pregnant more. <laughs> <laughs> but you, so you didn't have like any nausea, food aversion, swollen feet, like you know, some of the general, like it was a breeze. So, with my third pregnancy, I didn't know I was pregnant and my car wasn't working, so I had to take public transportation. And it seemed Whoever I sat next to didn't smell pleasant. Everybody was stinking to me. So when I get on the bus, I'll glance quickly to see who looks the cleanest, and I'll sit next to them, and they still didn't smell good. And then when I get off the bus and I go home, all I wanted to do was to grind hot pepper and eat it with fried egg and curry or bun, and then I'll feel better. And I didn't even know I was pregnant, but it kept going on, and I said, no, everybody cannot be smelling. It must be something with me, and then lo and behold, I was pregnant. So how far along were you with that pregnancy when you found out you were pregnant? About six weeks. Six weeks, okay. So it wasn't so far along. No. Okay, all right. Now, one important question I have that is so personal to me is how was your labor and delivery experience? So when my oldest son, um, I was two days past you. So I went back for my regular weekly checkup and they found out that I'm losing fluid around the baby. So they said, you cannot go home. You're going to deliver today. And it was 17 hours. Wow. And, and that's because I was induced. It was there, they didn't come on at home and then we made our way there. I was just there. They started the labor there. And, and that was very painful. Very, very painful. And it happened, you know. Well, I got a fedora after a while because with my first two kids, um, the first one, both my oldest and my middle were both induction. But my third baby, without any painkillers, 
but he was here. <laughs> he was not waiting. Okay. Okay. So, how was your postpartum recovery, especially with your first as a first-time mom? How was the experience for you? Did you feel overwhelmed? Did you feel like nobody gave you enough preparation about motherhood? Like, what, what, what was the thought process? What was going through your head, like the first few days, the first few weeks after you had delivered your son? So, the first few weeks after his birth. It was the only thing I could think about. I couldn't think about anything. I'll be in the shower, I'm thinking about him. I'll be cooking, I'm thinking about him. It was just him. But the thing is, even if I wasn't prepared, my mom and my aunt, they were there. So I had the having a child in Ghana experience. You know how when you have a child in Ghana, everybody does their part to help so you're not doing so much because I know People that don't live in Ghana tend to struggle a lot, but I did, especially with my first son. My mom and my aunt, they took over, so I can't complain. Okay. One of the reasons why I like to ask that is that when I, after I gave birth, okay, my story was a little different, going to be there, but I have to have a CS, so I felt like I've been hit by a bus. I felt like oh, it was like mother was so much. So when I eventually resumed church, I was always tired, of course, which is a thing with like when you have a baby. But I would stare at like mothers in church and I'm like, are you guys okay? Like, because I went through baby blues, like all of that crying and all of the emotions and everything. So I was in the church and staring at other younger mothers and wondering, are you okay? But because like some of them are not my friends, I couldn't approach them. Right. But it also gave me the a bit more understanding as like to extend grace when you see a person mother, when you see a mother with a young child, like to be gracious to them because they've been going through it and they can't really open up and talk about it. Anyway, so um how when it comes to parenting, especially parenting outside of Ghana. How has your experience been when it comes to discipline and like what has your parenting style been with your with your three kids? Well, my kids know if you don't do the right thing, you get in trouble. So you may get yelled at, you may get smacked, or time out. So when they were younger, they got a lot of time out. And I don't think I can I probably can count in my hand how many times I've hit any of my kids. Because I think they're pretty good kids. They listen. So yeah, if you don't listen, at times when they see that you're quiet, they know they're in bigger trouble. So and not being in Ghana, it's always different. You can't always hit a child or whatever. Well you can on their bum bum with an open um, no fist, no objects, no pain or anything. So you have we like when you're outside Ghana, but you were raised in Ghana. It's a little hard because you don't know what to do to still have the upper hand as the parent and what can get you in trouble. But so far so good. My kids, they listen. They don't. At this point, my oldest is 18. And so, he's like a babysitter. So, he disciplines the younger ones. He tells them it's time to do this or it's time to do that. So, I don't even remember my last time really disciplining. Okay. So, um, the other question I had was um, with the with motherhood, having three kids, having to also handle marriage and your job and beauty, are there times where you felt overwhelmed? And if you felt overwhelmed, like how how do you work through it? How do you overcome it? So um, I'm the type of person when I start to do something, if I'm not done, I keep doing it. At times I end up getting myself sick. So, um, I really don't, I, I don't know how I handle it. I just know that I handle it. I have to make the videos 
and still make sure that food is on the table for the family. But one thing that really keeps me working is that my family is very understanding. When it's time for me to make a video, they know mommy's working, I can't come to the kitchen. And at times, I don't know if you watched my um, meat dehydration video. Yeah. I had to go to work, so I left it for my oldest son to keep an eye on. Uh -huh. So, if you have a, a family that supports you, it doesn't really feel like work. So, if you have um, great family support, it, it, it comes easy because I feel like my husband understands and he feels that I'm tired. Sometimes he'll tell me, Days and now stop, take a break, or whatever. I'm the one that I keep moving and moving and moving. So, since I've been in Ghana, I haven't been able to vlog anything. I realize I'm really tired and I need to rest. So, I felt like I'm feeling that I'm tired now, but if I was home, it doesn't stop with me. Is that the same for when your kids were much younger? Well, when my kids were younger, um, to put three kids in daycare, it was better for me to not work. So I was a stay-at-home mom. And what I usually did to keep the home was, um, in the daytime, they're going to make a mess. As a mom, you shouldn't worry who comes into your house and it's a mess. Because it will get messy. It's when they go to sleep, I'll clean up. But during the day, we cook together, they know, oh, I'm making their favorite. So because I was a stay-at-home mom for most of their growing up, I just started working around the same time I started doing YouTube. So everything just happened at the same time. So I wouldn't say with my older son, I, I had to work. But when the second and last came back to back, it was paying a thousand dollars a week for daycare versus staying at home with them and then why should i go and work just to give to a babysitter or daycare i'd rather stay home and keep that money okay so how long have you been on youtube um four years maybe three to four years because i i believe i started february 2017. I'm not mistaken. Okay. Being a stay at home mom, how was that like for you? Did you get comments from people that made you feel like like you're not you're not doing it while you were staying at home mom? Yeah. Were there times where you, and like if you had those comments, how do you handle like what was your response to those comments that people made? Well, you know, if you're a Ghanaian then you're not in Ghana, you're in another man's land. Obviously, you're not there to stay at home, to sit around. So some people may not understand why you're doing that. So they'll say, why are you home? You have to home to home. don't stay home, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, it's your family dynamic. It's your situation. You know what is going on. You know if working is worth it or if it's not. So I really am the type of person that I try hard not to let what other people say about me bother me so much. Except I feel they try to disgrace me and maybe they will bring me down. But if you're telling me, maybe, oh, you're lazy. How can you allow your husband to be the only one working? He's not complaining. We're not asking you for our rent. We're good, so. What advice would you give to a stay at home who tends to feel overwhelmed, who tends to feel like um, the comments that the people are making are getting to them? Especially a stay at home or you have one kid and then you have a second kid and people are like, like, would you want to find a job? You know, like, how, what advice would you give to stay at home and what advice would you give to other people or like the general public? Well, in my opinion, being a stay-at-home mom is actually more work because 
when you get up in the morning and you go to work, whatever happens at home is none of your business until you get home. Maybe you're working nine to five. When you come home at five, you make dinner, everybody eats, everybody takes a shower, and it's already bedtime. And it's already bedtime. But when you're home all day, you are home all day. You're not sleeping, especially with young kids. Maybe if they're taking a nap, you get to take a nap because that's the only thing you could do. But at times, it's when they're taking a nap that you get to cook, you get to do the laundry, you get to clean. So there was a survey that said that being a mother, a stay-at-home mother is the hardest job ever because it's 24 7 while others go to work for eight hours you are working constantly because at times your kid may get sick and you still have to get up in the middle of the night to attend to them but if you go to work that's your break as a mom going to work is actually a break for you especially if you love what you're doing now you cannot feel bad because somebody thinks oh you're, you're just home you're not doing anything that will hurt you that will depress you and you don't need that you need all your energy to focus on your family take care of your family i stayed home nearly 10 years i i heard everything but I didn't go back to work until I was ready to go back to work. My husband my husband was ready for me to go back to work. I can't go back to work because you're looking down on me. Especially if I don't bring my kids to you in the morning for you to see. We're doing okay. We're paying our bills with everything that we need we have. You know, it's not you don't have to be rich to be a stay-at-home mom and I find that when I was a stay-at-home mom my kids did better in school because you were home to help them yes the, the work that you bring yes. them and guide them and you all. know but once you start working things get brought home that you don't see unless the kid gives it to you and if the kid is not responsible enough to say mommy this is it then you get emails and texts from the teachers looking for something that should have been turned in a month ago but when you're a stay-at-home mom you're on top of it being a stay-at-home mom to me was the best thing that happened to my children but if you cannot afford it i'm not going to advise that you do that but as long as you can afford it i think every single parent needs to try it even if it's for two years you're trying you will see it's a big difference because it's also a value you like you can't quantify like the the relationship you also build with your kids compared to both parents working outside of the home is that getting home at 8 p.m out of the house by 6 a.m there's not much of a bond as compared to if you are, you are constantly in their life so that's a great one and it's good to know that you can get that advice from sweet Adele. who knew you know and i know that like this would be an encouragement to me. I have a few friends who are there at home and they've had these challenges. Oh, people no. making all kinds of comments. They will make passing. it. Yeah. But people tend to forget that the couple makes the decision exactly. together. And they've decided that this is what is best for our family at this yeah. stage. When we get to another stage, we make another decision. Yeah. So don't pass such comments to people. You know, you know they have. Yeah. Anyway, um, when it comes to um, YouTube, I know you've had a lot of interviews, YouTube, yada yada, but what inspired you to start your YouTube channel? Well, as I said, I was a stay-at-home mom, so I I think I once the kids went back to school, I started having a little anxiety, depression, like they go, you've done everything you have to do, and now you just sit and wait for them. And because of the country in which I live, um, bad things happen in schools and stuff. So me being at home and my kids being in school, my mind will wander. And school shooting here, school stabbing here, got my anxiety level through the roof. So I just
just was speaking to my doctor and my doctor was like, you're headed for depression, you gotta do something. And at that time, my husband wasn't ready for me to go back to work yet. And I didn't, I didn't see anything wrong with me being at home. And also it was hard for me to find a job that I'll be home in time to wait for my kids at the bus stop and everything. So we weren't ready. But once I started feeling the type of way that it wasn't good. Anxiety is, is a serious thing. It's, I, it was happening to me like nobody's business. When my kids would go to school, I felt like I was sitting on pins and windows until they got back home. So once I spoke to my doctor and he was like, you need to you know, start doing something. He actually employed me as a medical assistant. I started working with him. I will watch YouTube and I started YouTube at the same time. So all of a sudden I went from not having anything to do to having so much to do. So that was my motivation. Like don't sit down and become depressed because that's what anxiety leads to, you know. So that's how I started. And what influenced your choice to that's a cooking channel, like not a vlog channel, not a motherhood channel. Like, what influenced your decision that you wanted to do? You wanted your, your channel to be about cooking? Well, um, I went to restaurant school, so a lot of people will ask me for recipes. So, um, there was one recipe that I was asked, and I had my daughter prepare it, and I put it on my Facebook, and it got a lot of feedback from friends. And so I realized instead of always, and I used to, when I would put something on Facebook, it was pictures. I used to literally write the recipe for the person okay. that's asking. So then I thought, well, what if I put it on this YouTube that I was watching and I saw other Ghanaians doing their thing? What if I can put it there and just send it to them when they're looking for it? So. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Um, if you had to give advice to a young mother, what advice would you give to the mother? A young mother. She has maybe two kids. One is five. One is three. But she has three kids back to back. Let's say four. That's the best three. Three. Back to back. Back to back. Okay. What advice? <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give? Um, to any young mother out there? A, a working mother or stay at home? Okay, so let's do working mother and then let's stay at home. So if you're a working mother, obviously you will be leaving your child to somebody. Make sure it is somebody that you trust. At times, even with the people that you trust, be sure to put cameras. Don't be shy to let the person know. Don't hide the cameras. Because I feel putting a camera to catch your nanny could be fatal. Your child will be dead. Let them know, hey, there's a camera right there. There's another one right there. I'll see everything you're doing on my phone. So that keeps them on alert. You let them know the only place there's no camera in this house is in the toilet. And I don't expect you to take my child into the toilet. There may not be any cameras, but to them, they're like, oh, you know, so I see a lot of videos where people are hiding cameras to catch somebody being bad. No, your child could die. Let them know it's there. So that way, when you go to work, you know, even if they are not quality, you, you don't have it in, in their head, they're thinking it's there. If you can put it there, then do it. But don't hide it to catch something. We're all human. They may lose their cool and do something they're not supposed to do. But usually when somebody knows they're being recorded, they'll lose their cool inside of them and then go home and use it on somebody else. So for working mothers, you definitely leave your child to somebody. Leave your child to your mom or somebody you trust. That somebody that loves your children, that have your children's best interest at heart. But if you're hiring a nanny, tell them there's a camera in the house. And then for the stay at home, make the most of it. Make the most of it. Do not allow anybody to.
bring you down, make you feel bad. It is a choice. If you have a husband and you don't go to them for food and your husband is holding it down, then don't care about what anybody says. Stay at home, raise your children, and they will be better than the person that's telling you, than the person that's telling you, oh, why are you staying home, whatever. It's your business, take care of it, and you will be And I admire how you support up and coming YouTubers, like myself, like Agnes World, Nana, um, Nana, Nana Bema. Yeah, so what advice do you have? Actually, I want you to give advice to bigger YouTubers. Like, I feel like some, I mean, it's natural in this world. Some people get to a certain height of fame or popularity and it kind of gets into their head, you know, and they forget where they came from. They forget that once upon a time, I only had 500 subscribers or 300 subscribers. Like, what advice would you give to bigger YouTubers in supporting um, up and coming YouTubers? And what advice do you have for up and coming YouTubers? So, um, with the so called bigger YouTuber, if you can help, help. If you can support, support. So, with me, it was a struggle for me in the beginning because it took me two years to get to a thousand subscribers. Wow. Yes, it, I feel like nowadays people get subscribers easier than when I started. It was people. I think people also didn't understand what subscribing meant. They probably thought they had to pay for something. So it was a struggle for me, and I had help from my fellow YouTubers. The when I started Obama's Kitchen, she I think she had about. 10,000 subscribers when I started and this lady will shout me out and I really appreciated her she would direct people to my channel so Obapa is like somebody that I really admire I actually feel like I learned my sharing ways from her you know because because she did it for me I felt like it was my duty to do it for others so that's why I feel like if you if you can help like they say it's a national cake if you can help help because all of a sudden there's this thing called algorithm it doesn't matter how many subscribers you have anymore you may see me today and think oh she got so many subscribers but tomorrow you may pass me and you will remember that oh once upon a time sweet helped me and she's struggling let me give her a push so that's how i see it that's a, i'm not crazy i'm not clinging I, i'm not looking for any favors from anybody if i can help if i see a video and i feel oh my followers should see this i share you know so that's how I see it. I feel like this big YouTuber, small YouTuber, YouTube is very strange right now. It's not big, it's not small. Everyone has a place. And everyone everyone will find someone who actually likes them. Yes. And and if the algorithm picks you today, I will be there for four years, you will be there for two years, and you're bigger and better than me. But hopefully you will remember, no way I'm leaving Sweet Ajele behind. I'm bringing her along. So everything we do today, we're going to bring tomorrow. So. And then for the, the, the younger YouTubers, the up and coming YouTubers, what's, what's your advice for them? Like, I mean, I know they say consistency pays. Keep being consistent. But I, know that, I feel like some people feel like, it's not paying off, so let me just stop. Or like, when I post a video, I only get, let's say, like 100 views or 55. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. I can't understand why people may want to stop. Create a community. Have people that genuinely love you, that will share your content. That's what you want, you know? So have people that create a community. That way, when you're feeling down, have somebody to push you. If you feel too big to help other people, you're not gonna get the same help. So 
create a community, a community among like other YouTubers. Yes. Okay. You know, because nobody's an island. So once you can, yes, we, I feel like we all need each other. <laughs> all right, sweet team. Welcome back to my channel. This is Sweet Angele. Okay, so Sweet Angele is right. <laughs> Of this day has given me the opportunity. <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you boy. We gave it with AC. I never in a million years thought that I would get to meet you or even interview you for my channel. So I am so grateful. Guys, try her turkey recipe. Try her granola soup recipe. Try her the last time I tried the soup bowl. Just this week and last week. Try her soap bolo recipe. I, I've used a lot of her recipes and I can vouch for the fact and that they are, they are yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they are trouble. They are top notch. So watch her recipe videos. Give them a try. Up your cooking game and your stomach will thank you for it. And your family members will thank you for it. So sweet Ajay, thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I will see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs> the brightness of this day has given me the opportunity to bring you this video. Welcome wait, back. wait, did she push record? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> because I said Because it's not action. She just turned around. Is it bluebird? Bluebird. Recorded. It's recorded.